what's the paper about paying with? Do we do 2022 number six post surgical modification and mRNA half life? Oh my, that is a long reading prompt. Well, let's see if we can kind of skim a little. Researchers are studying the use of RNA vaccines to protect individuals. They then talk about how the RNAs can code for certain something, then they put them back into cells, and that helps to protect them. Cool. When introduced in the cells, the mRNAs used for vaccines must be stable so they're not degraded before encoded proteins are produced. Researchers developed different caps that would they believed would be making them more stable, the normal three prime cap. Testing the effects, they then produced mRNA that have no cap, normal cap, and modified one, two, three caps. They then tested the amount of time it took for half of it to be degraded, as well as the amount of protein translated. So here we're given a data table. Again, there's those five different caps we talked about. No cap, GTP, normal cap, and then modified one, two, and three. The half-life of those different uh, structures, as well as the protein that was produced. So based on the data, identify which cap structure is most likely to protect the end of the mRNA from degradation. So if it's not being degraded, that means that it's going to have the longest half-life. So we're looking through our data and we can see, okay, well, right here, oh, cap two. Cap two is going to be the one that has the longest half-life. So I would say the modified cap two is the one that is going to protect it the most. Student says, modified cap two, increased the mRNA half-life the most and protected the end of the mRNAs from degradation. So this was just looking at the data table. So part B, based on the data of the mRNA with modified cap, describe the relationship between the mRNA half-life and the total amount of protein produced. So we can see that as the half-life increases, one, basically zero, 16, one, 15, four, 27, 13. As the half-life increases, the amount of protein also increases. So it's a positive uh, relationship. So a longer mRNA half-life associated with more protein, and where there is a positive correlation, positive relationship. So the student said, the greater the mRNA half-life, the more protein was translated from the mRNA. They then go on to say modified cap one is a curious outlier, producing almost five times as much protein despite degrading in a similar statistically identical period of time as the normal GTP cap. And we're gonna come back to that in just a moment. So part C says, after examining the data half-lives, the amount of uh, protein produced, the researchers hypothesized that each mRNA molecule with modified CAP1 was translated more frequently than with each mRNA molecule with the normal GTP. Evaluate their hypothesis by comparing the data in table one, okay? So we're looking here at the normal and the modified CAP1, okay? So they have a very similar mRNA, okay? So statistically the same mRNA half-life, but I do see the cap one has four times as much protein. So I would support the hypothesis and I would state that there is four times as much protein translated with cap one, even though it has the same half-life as the normal GTP. So data supported this hypothesis. Um, and anytime they ask you to evaluate, you're going to use the word support or you're going to use the words refute. So you must say whether you support the hypothesis or whether you refute the hypothesis. Okay. And then you must explain why you are supporting or why you are refuting. So data supports the hypothesis because half life of two mRNAs are the same. The amount of protein produced from the mRNA from modified CAP1 is more than and four times as much that produced from the mRNA from the normal CAP. So a student goes on to say, mRNA molecules with modified CAP1 degrade in a statistically identical period of time as the mRNA molecules with the normal CAP. However, the amount of protein translated from the modified CAP1 mRNA molecules was greater than the translated from the normal uh, CAP2, I'm sorry, just normal GTP CAP molecules. Given that the same amount of mRNA was added to each cell, this suggests that the research hypothesis was correct. So part D. Introduction of mRNA into cells allows the cells to produce foreign proteins that they might not normally produce. Explain why the production of foreign protein may be more likely from the introduction of mRNA than DNA into cells. And so we have to think to ourselves, well, where is the DNA? The DNA is inside of the nucleus versus the mRNA is just out in the cytosol. Okay, so a lot of these have to do with where the DNA is versus where the mRNA is. So protein production from DNA requires factors to initiate transcription. So you would have to go through transcription before you could translate. Protein production from the mRNA does not depend on processing of pre-mRNA. The mRNA is already the appropriate size, so inserting that into a cell allows it to already start being able to be produced instead of going through that normal post-transcriptional processing that takes place in the nucleus. And then the cells may be unable to transcribe the DNA while mRNA can be directly translated. Okay. 
So the student goes on to say proteins are produced directly from mRNA. If DNA coding for a specific protein was introduced for a cell, the protein would be produced. First, mRNA must be created. Not only does introducing mRNA reduce the complexity of the operation, but also controls during transcription translation process, increase the likelihood that this gene is not expressed. For instance, the mRNA resulting from transcribing the DNA might be spliced, preventing the protein from being produced. So if that was helpful, remember AP Biopaying was just by all.